Pets. My name is Nahuel Bleach and I'm speaking to you from Buenos Aires, Argentina. In this video tutorial guide we're going to see the mirror modifier. But we are not going to see the sur surface of this mirror. Oh, interesting. Interesting monster. Uh, we're going to see it in depth. We're going to see many many of these options, vertex groups, UV and mirror objects that are not usually seen or explained that I'm not sure why because are extremely extremely use useful uh, so are these that I can do this entire model working only half of it from the geometry that is obviously what you see that is being copied to uh, UVs or vertex groups so is a really really powerful modifier that is not usually used on its uh, full potential but first for first thing first we're going to start with the basic so if you know the basic you can skip a big chunk of this video because I need to start with the basics <laughs> there are people that doesn't know what this modifier does so I'm going to try to explain a bit about this Let's start with this uh, beautiful cube and let's cut it in the middle and let this side. Okay. Now we have a half of a cube and we have there in the middle uh, this point. This point here represents the center of the of the of this object. Not the geometry but the object itself. The position of the object also. Uh, is where the axis, I mean, um, the orientation, I mean, it's <coughs> drawn. For example, we have here a location 0, 0, 0 and a rotation 0, 0, 0 also. If we rotate this a bit and set that this to local, we can see that the orientation has changed. For the moment, we're going to we're going to keep the uh, the orientation aligned with the <coughs> word orientation so now we're going to add this standard mirror modifier and puff automatically the geometry is being copied on the x axis as you can see here this is the basics of the modifier you the very very basics of the modifier you copy the geometry from one one side to another depending on the axis axis working axis that you have selected and may, you may mainly use this to model you can also enable both axis or even the tree of them to generate these interesting patterns be aware that always always the center of the object is the center of the <coughs> axis to work so if I move this entire object you can see that the center is moving and you can see that the mirror is moving with it, with it. however if I move the geometry in using edit mode and the center is not changing you can see that the copies of the actually the mirror geometry is the one changing and the center it's on its place now we're going to do to extend this exercise a bit more a little a simple table okay we have these planes here we're going to look it from the top and we're going to do a tidy work to get the vertices as close as possible to get the marsh but you don't have to be precise at all because and this is the first interesting option that we're going to see we can use clipping if I don't use clipping remember that this and these are my mirror axis okay my working axis if I turn off my modifier we can see that then my real geometry is this one down here and if I turn 
if I turn on the modifier, we can see that we have copies here, here, and here. Okay, X and Y. So, if I move my vertices on the X mirror axis or the Y, we can see that the vertices are moving all along without any any control of it. Uh, actually, what is happening here is that the mesh is intersecting itself and this also can cause some problems. But clipping does something really interesting. If I try to push, look at my cursor, I keep moving it, but the, verti the vertex is not mov moving at all. That is what clip clipping does. It clips the point, or snap it actually, to the um, symmetry border, the mirror border. So uh, it keep it paste there. You can see that I cannot move it on X or Y axis. However, I can move it on Sith axis. You can do this also on the other um, vertices, but in this case, my mirror axis is only a uh, Y, so I can move it on X and Sith. Down here, we can move it on X and on Y, but if I move it on X, the point is snapped and I can no longer move it on X axis. And this option clipping, it's about that. Keep the vertices or the edges fixed to the <coughs> mirror border. Really, really useful actually. So we're going to scale this a bit because we want to do our nice coffee table. Set S Sith zero to scale on Sith axis to zero value, and we are almost there. We almost have our table. Now we have here an option called merge that I'm not sure if I want to show you now, but uh, let's try. What merge does is actually merging the points that are touching among each other. Now I had added using control 1, 2 or 3, you can use that shortcut, a subdivision surface modifier and this modifier subdivides the mesh as you can see and also smooth the new vertices. And you can smooth the new vertices because these vertices here are not uh, merged. You, you can move it, okay, those vertices are snapped by the clipping option but are not merged so you get this result if you select merge you can see that automatically those vertices the original ones and the mirror the ones generated by the modifier are merged so you can use safely source subserve modifier and this is especially useful when you have a character and this is your medium point so you don't want to have any weird creases smoothing on the character face or chest or back so merge is a must once you enable merge you also enable this option here merge limit and to show you this I'm going to add a few edges and this one so you can see it so if you set the merge limit to a really really low value the vertices are not going to be smoothed because you have to be under center certain value to uh, the to the vertices to be merged however if you set this number too high as you can see here you start losing you starting you are going to starting to lose the vertices from the original mesh from the original mesh to the uh, mirrored mesh so here I'm using a 2 which is a huge number that you are not pr probably not going to see anywhere never but I'm going to, sh to use this number to to explain this but 
numbers like uh, 0.01 are more more use, used and usually this kind of number is also too big because the when we are modeling uh, high res uh, models we usually have things really really tidy uh, in some places so this number could be a problem if you use 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 001 you don't you shouldn't have any issue if you are uh, tidy enough and use clipping but this number is something that is a, a number that you have to keep an eye on uh, but shouldn't be a really really prob a really problematic stuff it's actually quite quite simple to understand if you are tidy and do a nice sharp modeling now let's add to this to see the next option because clipping has another trick under the sleeve if I turn off clipping and I start to adding some extrusion you can see that in the inner f in the inner side of this mirror here here and here and here some faces are being generated and this is a problem you don't want those faces there because of this can you see what's happening here in the middle uh, let's return here this this crease it's been generated because of those faces and you probably don't want to have faces there because as you can see here are a problem you usually want to get a result like this well clipping is quite interesting because if you have turned it on as, you, as I mentioned on later uh, the faces, the vertices are snapped to the um, mirror axis okay but also if you select the faces and extrude it will detect which uh, edges and faces are snapped to these um, edges to this mirror axis and won't generate the faces on those extrude which is really 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 handy if I turn off clipping you can see that the faces are now being generated and we don't want that most of the time sometimes we don't want we do want that and even we don't want merge so we can have some sort of weird result like this one but most of the time we don't want it okay now let's go to keep with our coffee table oh is that a nice table or not okay now the next stuff on this uh, simple sample in this basis samples are there you go mirror object as I said before uh, all the mirroring mirroring stuff uh, it's been happening based on our object center our center pivot or our origin however you want to call it but we have this option down here mirror object and these options let me add an empty to the center uh, this option enables us to select any object on the scene and use that object as a mirrored point you can see that our our origin of this table object is it's still in the center but now the mirroring is being done on the empty position on orientation <clears throat> this can be really really handy when you are working with many objects or if you want to do some interesting VFX so to this coffee table we can add also a little sphere 
that doesn't look doesn't look really interesting for the moment. Okay, we can add it there. Okay, more or less in the center. And now to this sphere, we're going to add a mirror modifier. <laughs> Who knew? Mirror on X and Y. Okay. In. We've got this here. Nice bolt to the table, but we are also need these bolts on the four corners. So we are going to use this mirror modifier based on this sphere center that I have there, and also we're going to add a second mirror modifier. But this one is also going to be working using the empty that we just created. So now I can have red bolts all over the place. And if I modify the first one, all the others are going to be modified as as well. So we can easily add some details to this table. like nice bolts if you want it on your coffee table all controlled by several mirror modifiers this is uh, a way to use this tool and an interesting way to add some detail that could be used uh, or improved in many many ways <coughs> more complex than this one okay now we have seen uh, axis Merge limit, merge option, clipping, and mirror object. Now we get, we're going to see vertex loops and UV and texture. And for that, we're going to use this character that I have done here. First, let's reset these and try to ignore the orientation of the hand. I don't know why it's oriented that, they, that way, probably, probably a constraint that should be off or something but my brain and skills are a bit rusted because I it's been a year since I did a rip as should be done but I know the basics and I and I did this one using that for example this bone here that the one we're going to use as an example it's been called antebrazo uh, L and the for arm L would be in English, I'm not sure. And the other one is antebrazo, but uh, it ends using the R. So Blender knows that this is left and this is right. This is really, really important because of the next thing. I'm going to delete all my vertex loop and I'm going to now paint this one here to do this as, as an example. I'm not going to paint the vertex groups of the entire model, but this is going to give you a hint of what am I doing here. I have set uh, also my armature to my geometry and the armature object to this modifier to be able to paint it. Also to create automatically the vertex group of the selected bone. Now, let's see, options, turn off this. And select mix, for example, and let's paint a bit. Okay, I have selected antebrazo L, and it's been created the group antebrazo L. So we're going to paint here the antebrazo more or less it shouldn't be too too <coughs> too precise okay now if i move hmm thing, things got a bit broken a bit too much and that actually it's normal it's normal it's normal because this is what am i doing here this is what i am doing here i'm painting 
only this part of the arm to this brazo um, dash L. So if I move this bone, these vertices are going to follow this because why? Because this is the original mesh, this side, the left side, and when it's uh, mirrored, it's been actually actually been copied. Now we have this vertex groups option. So what this do? What why you, there is nothing changing? Because this vertex group mirrored also the weight of the mesh to be to match the the name of the bone on the other side. It's a bit tricky to understand but you will see what I am what I am talking about in a second. I have here and the brass L which is this one this bone here. Okay? Now in the other side I got I got the same bone but called low dash R R. Now for this option vertex group to work I need to have here this group for this bone and also another group for this bone and I am going to paint only on this first group the original group from the original and real side of the model okay but we need also have the other group called R to generate the symmetry or, or the, uh, how we can say it, the other side of the model. So once I hit enter, as you can see the mirror modifier automatically detects the creation of this group and says, okay, I got antebrazo L, which is the original mesh, I am duplicating the mesh to the other side and oh, Okay, I got another group called an antebrazo arch, so this should be the mirror side of this one. Okay, let's change the weight of the vertex of this virtually created side by the modifier, and let's do that the antebrazo L weight going be on the antebrazo R. And that way, the modifier gets the information to mirror also the vertex group. Why is this important? Because if you have only one side of a model, you can wait or, or paint only one side of the weight of the weight of the model. Okay, only the left side or, or only the right side, depending on which one you did, and only by having the 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 symmetry the symmetrized group that should be called like dash r or dash l the mirror modifier automatically takes or control over it and mirrors the weights and you only need to paint half of the model which is really 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 handy so this vertex group option it's really important and actually help me to do half of the work because now I'm going to paint this here the thing that is going to be really, really broken but I don't care and if okay Wait, Manuel. Let's create a group. Manuele. Okay. Now that hand is being painted to Manuel or hand L <laughs> if you want to translate it. And of course, we're going to see that 
the mirrored side is completely broken because it's following this bone so we are also going to create a group called mano or hand which is the translation R and there you go now it's following the other bone the right bone because as we said the mirror gets the information from this side and mirrored to the other side if we have our bones uh, named named correctly really really handy option to do half of the work now the last one last thing is the UV mirror option and what this does is the next thing let me open it here UV image editor Okay. Now, if I turn off and on this U option, you can see textures U. You can see that if I turn it on, the texture is get a completely mirrored. Okay. If I turn on, you can see that the texture change. Why is this? If I turn off textures the modifier is going to take the mesh as it is this side and it's going to we scale and it's going to mirror as I did uh, here duplicating the object and it's going to merge the vertices in the middle if I set merge them okay so if I have my UVs on this side of the texture, the, side, the texture is going to be the same one side to the other because the UVs are in the same place, so nothing is going to change. However, if we turn on UV, U or B, because also you can move it on B too, remember that this axis is U and this axis is B it's like uh, X and Y okay so if we turn on U the mesh the original mesh is going to be duplicated and also it's going to be duplicated the UV in the other direction to generate the mirror of the also the UV okay we're generating the, the mirror of the, the, the geometry and also the mirror of the of the UV on the UV space based on this middle here that would be 0.5, U0 and Y1 on U ok Okay, if we have zero U here and one U here, point five would be the middle, and here is where the UVs are get mirrored. Now it's a bit difficult to see, so we are going to turn on down here at display modify option. This modify uh, option enables us to see the modified inversion of the mesh after the ent the entire list of modifier had apply on the geometry a bit long to explain right so basically we can see what happening with the UVs down here after the left modifier was applied for example um, in this case mirror UV so UV project UV warp or other modifier that could change our UVs even uh, subdivision surface also change and smooth our UVs so you, we can see also that difference here using this option modify so you can see that if I have turned on you I have the this gray mesh that it's going to that this will be the representation of our actually the our um, right side of our created of our new created mesh okay you can see it there 
that the same way that the mesh is a mirrored also it's been mirrored the UV so this way we can have a fully uh, um, play this place unfold UV of the all of the original model and also the mirrored one in order to have a fully unfolded model to paint and mirrored which is like it's talking against the modifier but yeah sometimes we ha want to have the mirrored geometry and an even and un unmirrored texture to have these differences and break some or and break a thing a bit the the symmetry of the model now the last thing i want to explain here is this you can see that here in the middle 0.5 i have only the shell and the head because uh, i have no more space to put the rest of the of the parts but if you can see here i have this I go. This is going to be. This should be the the chest and the and the belly area, or chunk of the UV. I have it here towards the zero position. And as you can see here, this is being mirrored on the point five option. So it's going to be right here. Okay. Please ignore this one. There you go. So, is this useful? Is this easy to work with? Actually, it is. Now, I can paint here from this, or try to paint here and here to try to generate a straight line. I could also, I could try to paint uh, on 3D. But if I want to modify this on 2D, I can also turn on repeat. So as you can see here now, we can work on the tiled area and paint seamlessly on U, on U axis on the UV ward, which is really interesting because I can now go to paint, tiling, and paint one side to another outside on the tiled area. And paint without any any issue. This is also can be done on Krita if you are interesting. This Krita is a 2D editing program to draw, and if you hit W, you have the this option to to paint tiled uh, to paint tiled areas and get tiled texture, which is very very interesting. So as you can see, the <laughs> painted interesting painted texture. Uh, you can actually get really really good and open on unfolded UVs using the UV texture option and knowing how to um, place it on the UV area um, so I guess this is it <coughs> the basics axis areas merge clipping mesh limit and mirror object the more advanced vertex groups and UV textures and all of this can work together to get our character almost finished using or working only half of it as you can see here a fully rigged character well fully rigged character a character <laughs> with bones and pose mode that can uh, work painting only the half of it and working only the half of it so I hope this video is, would be useful for you interesting and at least not annoying of my Spanglish uh, talk and I don't know if you would like to see another tutorial leave a comment on the box below at YouTube or like or subscribe or share talk with a friend or no I don't know uh, anyways hope you like it see you soon and bye